sa Joy Mude na makita natin si Sister Christine. So, salamat Ate Reni doon sa patuloy po na pag-i-invite. Praise God. Uh, marami po tayong mga kapatid na nasa bakasyon ngayon. Si Ate Reni. At uh, si Bansani, kamabalik lang. At uh, next week, magbabakasyon naman o bukas si Ate Sylvia. So, marami po nasa bakasyon. So, at even si Ate Reni, magbabakasyon po. Sa Ate Lerma. Sa Ate Lerma. <laughs> Uh, sa Ate Reni, magbabaksyon sa Ate Lerma. Ayan, so praise God. And yung ating pong pasahe sa hapong ito ay uh, yung account dun sa feeding of the 5,000 men. Actually, sa buong Bible po, especially dun sa gospel account written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, maliban po dun sa uh, resurrection ng ating Panginoong Sus, wala pong ibang miracle recorded doon sa four gospel at the same time. Ibig sabihin, ito po yung feeding of the 5,000 men. Ito lang po yung miracle na ginawa ng ating Panginoos na masusumpungan doon sa apat na gospel account. Masumpungan sa Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It means na for sure na if we visit doon sa Matthew, merong Mark. If we visit doon sa Mark, merong Luke. Pag nabis pa rin natin siya doon sa Luke, merong John. So hindi po natin siya mamimiss sa Luke. And yung pong sinasabi doon, no, 5,000 men. So hindi kasama doon kung kada men may isang asawa, ng babae, and minimum na may dalawang anak na, na, na anak yung mag-asawa, so there will be around 20,000 na pinakain yung Panginoong Sus at one time. Tanda natin, during that time, wala pong mga pandiria na nagpupulos ng mass production ng bread o fish during that time. Kahit may pera ka, kung may pera ka man, walang nagbebenta. At kung may nagbebenta, wala kang pera ng ganong kadami para to feed yung 20,000 at one time. So makita po natin yung kahalagahan ng pasahe po na to. And I want you po, babasahin ko po yung ating pasahe slowly at I want you to observe. Gusto po abang binabasa ko ay tingnan nyo yung anais na sabihin sa atin ng Panginoon as you understand yung storyline. Of course, mag-usapan natin mamaya. But then as I read it, gusto pong sundan nyo doon sa slide o kung may mga Bible kayo para pag binuksan nyo ulit on your own, sa inyong pag-aaral, ay madali niyo po maalala yung mga gusto natin i-emphasize sa hapong ito. Luke chapter 9, verse 10 hanggang verse 17. Luke chapter 9, verse 10 hanggang verse 17. Ito po ay masusumpungan din sa Matthew chapter 14, masusumpungan din sa Mark 6, and John chapter 6. So, apat na gospel account. Verse 10, On their return, tanan natin, doon sa preaching doon sa last uh, two, last week, preaching ni Pastor Dong, sabi doon, He sent the twelve for preaching, healing, and uh, pagpapalaya sa mga demonyo doon sa mga taong inaalipin ng Hebrew Spirit. So, yun ang on their return. So, this time, bumalik sila after their Uh, there's a uh, mission. And the apostles, referring to the twelve, told him all that they had done. Ibig sabihin, after the mission work, now the twelve returned and they gave him, the Lord Jesus Christ, report of what had happened. Kung ano yung nangyari. And sabi doon, so all they had done. And then, He took them and withdrew them apart. So out of the many, kinuha niya sila, separate. Sinepate niya sila at nag-withdraw sila. Ibig sabihin, sinep-aside niya sila para mahiwalay sila doon sa napakaraming tao. Perhaps they were tired and perhaps to talk to, to them privately for a rest and for a contemplation. And then, to a town called Bethsaida, 
when the crowds, verse 11, when the crowds learned it, they followed him. So, yung nais ng Panginoon is for them to have, uh, to re refresh perhaps, magpagpahinga sila, and magpag-usap, but then the crowd ay sumunod sa kanila. And then, sabi sa doon ng verse 11, and yet, sabi doon, and he welcomed them. Gusto niya mapagpahinga sila, but then sumunod yung mga crowd, and yet, welcome pa rin niya sila. And then, he spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and cured those who had need of healing. Now, the day began to wear away. Ibig sabihin, mag-aahating gabi na, magkatakip silin. And the twelve came to him to send, and said to him, Send the crowd away. So, makita nyo, na other 12 disciples giving the Lord instruction, send the crowd away. Why? To go to the surrounding villages, not just villages, but villages and countryside to find lodging and to get provisions. For we are here in a desolate place. So, the concern of the disciples is they were in the uh, lowly place. Ibig sabihin, whether ito ay nandun sa, uh, sa desert place o doon sa lugar na malayo doon sa food supply. So sabi lang mga alagad, instruct them or tell them to go maganap ng matutuluyan at makabili ng hanlang makakain. But, verse 13, But He, the Lord Jesus Christ, said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people, for they were about 5,000 men. So, big sabihin, Lord, number one, we don't have the money. Number two, sabi niya, they were too many. We cannot afford. And then, his he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups about 50 each. And sumunod po sila, and they did so, and have them to sit down, and taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing over them. Then he broke the five loaves, and he gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd, verse 17, and they all ate and were satisfied. And what was left was picked up and twelve baskets of full broken pieces. Ito po yung buhay sa salita ng Diyos para sa mga anak ng Diyos. Let us pray. Let's bow our Lord, aming panalangin sa sandaling ito as we contemplate, as we study your word and God. Lord, that your Holy Spirit mangusap po sa puso, sa isipan ng bawat isa sa amin. At ang mensahe niyo po, Panginoon, ang siyang maihayag sa amin, Panginoon. Lord, help us open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds that we may, that we may understand the deep things, the fruits of your word of God, for our good and for your glory. This we all pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, yung pong ating basahe, kung uh, sinundan nyo rin pong basa ko, nakakita natin yung, so sabi nga, galing sila dun sa missionary journey. And perhaps, pagod na pagod sila. And nung pagbalik nila, perhaps, Actually, babasahin niyo yung kay John, they were so excited. Na kung saan, they were so excited dun sa kanilang accomplishment. But then, so sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, so he withdraw them, he took them among the many para sila makapagpahinga. But then, yung crowd ay sumunod pa rin sa kanila. Gusto maging simple yung mensahe natin sa hapong ito. I will have only two points. Yung point number one, understanding 
the needs. Understanding the needs. Maunawaan yung kailangan o yung pangangailangan. At pangalawa, meeting that needs or meeting those needs. So, verse 10 hanggang verse 14, makita natin doon kung ano yung kailangan. And verse 14 hanggang verse 17, makita natin kung paano matutugunan yung pangangailangan. So, yung pong title ng aking mensahe, The All-Sufficient Lord Teaches Us How to Minister. So, He sent the twelve, and they came back, and as sabi niya, let's go for a while, privately, have rest, and let us make evaluation of your ministry. So, yun po yung mensahe. The Lord Jesus Christ, the All-Sufficient Lord, teaches us how to minister. So, mga po natin yung unang need, understanding the need, there is a need for rest and evaluation. Pero kung pangangailangan para magpahinga, to replenish their strength and perhaps to replenish their spirit as they contemplate before the Lord Jesus Christ. Contemplate before God alone, away from the masses, away from the busy schedule. So, yun po yung unang need, the needs for a rest and evaluation. Tapos sa verse 1 to 6, sabi mga kanina, the, set, the, the 12 verse said to preach, to heal, and to cast out demons. Kung ano yung ginagawa ng ating Panginoon, He empowered them, He commissioned them to do yung mga bagay na ginagawa niya. He multiplied Himself into 12. He cannot do all things alone, and so He needed 12 ordinary men, multiplied them, so that they can do what he was doing. Preaching the word, healing the people, and setting the, setting the people free from yung mga evil spirit. Sabi sa verse 10, on their return, sabi nga, sa pagbalik nila, the 12 apostles told him all they had Done. So they reported. Nakita natin dito, hindi after they were sent from a mission and then bumalik sila and then nahiga sila, natutog and who cares? They did not report to him. No. They recognized who is the general, who is the master. They were mere minister, servant. They reported to their master. Imagine nyo po, examples, like some military Merong general and then sinend niya kanyang troops outside and then pagbalik nila, hindi sila nag-report sa general, it a treason. It's the insubordination. But the fact na nakakuna natin, yung mga from outside, they will always, yung mga soldier, they will always report to sa kanilang general. Why? To inform him and to update Yung kalang general, ano yung kalang situation? Perhaps they needed backups, they needed reinforcement, they needed kung ano man yung constant communication to sa kalang general. And so yung mga alagad po, pagbalik nila, they were eagerly and excited na mag-report to sa kalang master because it is not about their doing kung ano yung gusto lang nilang gawin. They have particular, specific tasks na binigay sa kanila ng Panginoon. Preach the good news. Heal the sick. And set the captives free. Yun po yung kanilang task. Yun po yung kanilang mensahe. They are to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit as the Lord be uh, pinagkanood sa kanila. So, ganun din po, makita natin, there is a need and how to accomplish that mission para ma-fulfill, ma-meet yung need. Mata po natin, so yung kanyang mga alagad, he took them and withdrew them apart to a place called Bethsaida. So, he took them from the crowd for their needed rest and evaluation session of the ministry they have ha, na kanilang ginawa. So the rest, mga natin, is needed. 
Kung paano yung machine po, yung sakyan, hindi siya pwede tumakbong tuloy-tuloy na walang pahinga, mag-overheat siya, naunawaan. What a God we have, what a Lord we have, He understood. Na kinakailangan yung kanyang mga manggagawa ay kailangan ding nagpapahinga. Hindi siya sa vista na, sige magtrabaho ka hanggang mamatay ka dyan, magpatag ka ka, and then I will replace you with a new worker. Hindi po. The Lord Jesus Christ is so concerned doon sa kanyang mga manggagawa. He understood that they needed rest. So ganun din po sa atin. We have to understand na kung saan we have this much thing to do, but then we need yung sufficient time lang lang para ma-accomplish. And so we have to balance yung ating mga task, yung ating time para po magawa natin yung mga dapat na magawa without sacrificing yung mga bagay na hindi dapat i-sacrifice. Sacrificing our health, sacrificing our time with the Lord, sacrificing our time with our family. May mga tao po, they are so extreme, ah, eh, sa Panginoon ko, sa Panginoon ko. So, ano nangyari? Nato sila lagi sa so, mga namang ginagawa nila, yung mga namang asawa, naghahanap ng time, ano nangyari? Merong ibang tao na nagbigay ng time sa kanang asawa. And so, they destroy their relationship. May mga tao na sa labas, they needed his time or their time. But then, they forgot na yung kanang mga anak, they also needed time. And so, yung mga anak nila, nakita yung time na kailangan nila outside sa kanang mga peers, sa kanang mga kaibigan, and so, nang pagkaibigan, and then, nangyari. Kung ano mga influensya nung naibigay ng kanang mga kaibigan. There should be a balance. And the Lord, praise God, He understood yung kong buhay na ministry. So we have to put po, so sinasabi dito, what's a comfort na meron tayo as Christian that the Lord ay alam po niya kung ano yung kailangan natin at kung ano yung mga kabuti para sa atin. Makita po natin dito, the ministry evaluation session ay kailangan for effective way for an effective way possible in doing the ministry. So una, perhaps kailangan magpahinga and at the same time, since they made the report, it's time to make evaluation. Ano ba yung nangyari? Ano ba yung pwede natin ma-eliminate? Ano ba yung bagay on how we can improve next time that I will send you 2 by 2 or 70? How you will carry it out? Carry out applying yung mga learnings, experiences na naranasan natin this time around. So there was an evaluation session na kailangan as they contemplate the kanilang experience during this, this time. Habang nagpatay ka sila, nagpusap sila, refreshing themselves and perhaps exhorting one another, praise God, nung ito yung nag-struggle naman na ipag-usap, Doon sa tao na to, nag-init na halos sumurender na ako. Pero si Brother Andrew, sabi niya, count down, count down. Diba? So perhaps there is this kind of conversation among themselves na kung saan it's one of them, as they share yung kanilang experience, ay makita mo yung bawat isa ay na-edify doon sa kanilang mga karanasan. Or perhaps yung struggle ng bawat isa ay as they share, ay uh, natututo yung uh, 11 among dun sa experience ng isa. But then makita po natin dito, naroon natin, kinakailangan nila na, maging, na mag-usap, it's not just to report, but us is, sabi mga kanina, how yung mga bagay na kanilang pwedeng i-consider for their next mission. Para na next time that they will be sent for a mission, which they will be sent again, next time will be two by two, sa yung nga, then apply nila kung ano yung mga bagay where they failed or when they succeeded. Para mas effective yung kanilang next mission. Alam po natin, there's always, sa yung nga, there's always yung ministry sometimes 
may sa merong joke na sasabi, ano ba yung purpose ng ng government? Sometimes minsan yung yung sagot dun sa joke is yung gobyerno ay pinapa-complicate yung simple at pinapamahal yung affordable. Minsan is joke. Na kung saan is simple yung buhay nila mo yung mga nabubuhay sa community, simple lang kan lang yung kanilang government doon, no? meron silang barangay tao, nung, nung sinauna. Walang complex na, na government, but then ngayon, na very complex yung government, parang napakahirap, mag-a-apply ka ng permis para gusto mo magtinda ng talong sa palengke, pupunta ka kay barangay captain, pupunta ka kay mayor, pupunta ka ng permit, ang dami-dami. Unlike dati, barter lang, meron kang supply, may bibili, ganun lang kadali. At now, very complicated para ka makakuha ng permit, ilang tao yung dadaanan mo, ubus na yung mga, uh, yung kapital mo, bago ka makakuha ng permit. Nakuha ng permit, wala ka ng kapital, sa dami ng mga proseso na dinaanan. So, minsan sasabi na, the government purpose is to complicate the simple. And minsan naman sinasabi, the The, uh, the purpose of government is to make expensive yung bagay na affordable dahil sa dami ng tax na dinaanan so kung yung supply from China is 1 dirham pagdating dito ay 10 dirhams na bakit? transport fee, kung ano man mga fee, mga taxes ano po yung point natin dito? sa ating itong ministry, there's only three simple na binigay na task ng ating pangsus the priority is to preach the Gospel, that people may be set free from their captivity, that they may find healing. So there should be a clarity. Perhaps nung nag-usap sila, kinakana mag-usapan yung clarity. Doon sa kanilang mensahe, hindi sila nagko-contradict na 12. Hindi nagsira si Pedro, ay nasabi ni, ni, ni Barabbas o ni Judas. Wala pala si Barabbas doon sa 12, di ba? Si Judas, at hindi, hindi ganyan. Dapat tights muna, bago yung kung ano pa man, di ba? Ito sinasabi ni Andrew, hindi. So there should be clarity of the message. There should not be conflict dun sa mensahe. So maliwanag dapat, very plain, very simple, yung gospel ay very simple. We are sinner, there is a savior, we need to repent, and be saved. Hindi nga na kailangan ng napaka-complicated na mensahe. And then perhaps there should be a A discussion of the movement. So now, after preaching the gospel, what is the next move? Ano yung gagawin natin? So we preach and then we'll just leave them alone sa kanilang sitwasyon. Or we should bring them doon sa ating Panginoong Sus and that they may be disciples. Ibig sabihin, maging kabahagi sila doon sa mga believers. Ito po yung isang sabi ni George Whitfield na isang Methodist. Sabi niya, itong bagay na I fail, but where si John Wesley ay naging matagumpay. John Wesley, pagka may nasharon siya, lagi ilalagay niya sa small group, ilalagay niya doon sa body of believers so that he or she might be nurtured, nourished into a mature man or woman that yung tao na to might be useful for the ministry. Connect to the Lord, connect to the church that they may be ministered, nurtured, and equipped and then involve them and engage them to the ministry. Yan ang ginagawa ni John Wesley. Whereas George Whitfield, mission from everywhere, and then after ng mission, may mga nampalataya, they don't know where to connect. But then, both of them, makita mo, they were heroes of the faith na kung saan during the enlightenment ng uh, sa ating 15th, 16th century, makita mo, yung kanila kung paan sila ginamit ng uh, Panginoon. My point is, there should be clarity, there should be movement, after sharing the gospel, ano yung next? Engage them in a small group so that they will grow. They will not be alone. They will not be isolated. And then, perhaps as they share, makita nila yung mga experience, perhaps this is effective, this is not necessary. So there should be alignment doon sa ano ba yung mas kailangan. Minimizing yung mga bagay na hindi kailangan and then focusing kung ano yung dapat na gawin. May clarity, there is movement, there is alignment, and there is 
focus kung ano lang ba yung dapat nating ginagawa. And then, mas merong tayo uh, kapahingahan, ibig sabihin, hindi complicated yung mensahe, hindi complicated yung paglingkod, hindi complicated yung proseso. And paano po nila ginawa yung bagay na yun? So, sabi nga, they took rest and at the same time as they were resting, they made evaluation dun sa kanilang lamang na ministry. It's important po during our busy day, during our busy week, to find some time, at least once in a while, once in a week, once in a night, na contemplate, Lord, ano na po ba yung nangyayari? Lord, ano na po ba yung nangyayari? Ano po ba yung nangyayari sa buhay ko? Lord, ito ba yung gusto mo talaga? Lord, ito ba talaga yung gusto mo na nagtatrabaho ko dito, buong buhay ko? Oh Lord, perhaps meron kang ibang plano para sa akin. Oh Lord, perhaps na hindi ito yung gusto mo para sa akin. We have to ask the Lord, not make an assumption. Huwag po tayong mag-presume lang. Talk to the Lord. Talagin, yung mga tao na to, they were busy ang Panginoon. Yung 12 day din address, rest. But when they came to the Lord, the Lord welcomed them. It is not na, I don't have time now. You are not my priority. Because you are lonely, humble, a servant. Mas busy ako sa mga doktor, sa mga lawyer. Hindi po. Anyone who comes to the Lord, ay inaatinan sila ng ating pangyusus. Makita natin yung, so una, they needed rest, they needed evaluation, and they also, makita natin dito, the needy crowds. Sabi po sa verse 11, when the crowds learned it, they followed him. And he welcomed them. We welcome po sila ng ating pangyusus. And he spoke to them the kingdom of God. Nandun po lagi, the priority was is to share the gospel, the good news. The gospel and the sabido spoke to them the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, because I mean, there's kingdom, there is king, and there are the subjects. God is the king, and we are the subjects. Yun po yung laging mensahe, that we are not self-made. We are not the king of the world. We are subject of the Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and we are answerable sa Kanya. That's the message. The problem nowadays is we think we are self-made, we are not answerable to anyone, and so people sinasabi na, hindi, ako yung bahala sa buhay ko, wala ako pala nagutan, kahit sino pa man. We are all answerable at the end of the day to the Almighty God who created us. Dapat po natin maintindihan yun. But then natin natin dito, even at a time set for rest, can become an opportunity to fulfill yung pong purpose na kung saan sinabi ng ating Pangsus. Pero kung, if you will open yung Luke chapter 4, verse 43, after ng uh, very successful na mission ng ating Pangsus, pinagaling yung mga Ama, uh, yung mga may sakit, yung mga inahalina ng demonyo. After ng successful ng kanyang ginawa, so he withdrew himself. And then, kinamagahan, kasi nagpe-pray siya, while everybody asks it, the Lord Jesus Christ is busy communing to the Lord, to God the Father, so that He may replenish His strength, yung body niya and His spirit. And then, pagdali na umaga, yung mga alagad, Lord, Everybody are looking for you. Ayaw siyang paalisin. Gusto na manatili siya doon. Why? He was extraordinary. Miracle worker. And then, ito yung tugon ng Panginoon Jesus. Sa verse 43. Pabasahin ko muna yung 42. Sabi sa verse 42 ng Luke chapter 4, And when it was day, he departed and went into the desolate place to pray. And the people sought him and came to him and would have him from leaving them. So, ayaw siyang paalisin. And then, ito yung sagot ng ating pangsana. So, the request is, Lord, can you just stay here? So, sagot ng ating pangsus, na natin, 
Very popular siya. Sikat na sikat siya. Diba? Pwede sabihin niya, okay, make for me a kingdom. Make for me a palace. And I'll stay. Yun yung gusto ng tao, diba? But then, sabi sa verse 43, He said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other town as well. I must move on to the next place to preach the kingdom of God to other town as well. Pwede po tapos doon. Sabi niya, for, big sabihin, because I was sent for this purpose. It's very clear sa sabi ng ating Pangsus, the purpose I was sent by God the Father is to preach the kingdom of God. That's the purpose of God in sending Christ. That's the purpose of Christ in sending the twelve. That's the purpose of the church, why Christ sent the church. And that's the purpose of our existence as a church. We do not invent yung purpose natin. There's only one purpose. The purpose for which God sent Christ, the purpose for which Christ sent the twelve, the purpose for which Christ sent the His disciples, and that's our purpose as a church. The ministry has only but one purpose. To preach the kingdom of God. What's the point gumaling yung isang tao? Gumaling siya, do sa kanyang malabo na mata, gumaling siya do sa kanyang kidney uh, disease, and yung papunta sa sahen. There's no point, right? But then, yung isang tao na na-reconciled sa Diyos, nagkaroon ng maayos na relationship sa Diyos, became a child of God, he or she will enjoy yung eternity in the presence of the Almighty, gracious, and loving God. That's why yun po yung priority Lagi ng ministry. That is our mission. And praise God. Meron po tayong missional God. Our God is a missional God. He sent Christ. He sent the twelve. He sent the disciples. He's sending us. Sabi na sa Matthew chapter 28, right? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, hanggang 20. All authority. The king is saying, all authority has been given to me. So based on that authority, here am I sending you. Go make disciples of all the nations. Sinasabi niya. The be, yung weight ng komenda yun, rest dun sa kanyang sinasabi, all authority has been given to me. And so I'm telling you, go. That is our mission. Because we have a missional God. We have a God who saves. Kaya nga po, yung mission ng church natin, the mission of the church, hindi po tayo nag-invento ng mission. The mission of the church, yung nice natin is, pinasimplify po natin yung the Great Commission. Kung memorize nyo, it's very simple. We don't like na magroon tayo ng napakahabang paragraph na mission statement that no one remembers. Our mission statement, ginawa natin very simple, but then it captured the Great Commission to sa Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, hanggang verse, verse 20. We exist, we exist to exalt the Lord, to equip the saints, and to evangelize the world. Very easy. 3E. E. Lucio 4E. We exist. The first E. But actually, that's not the first E. We exist to exalt the Lord, to equip the saints, and to evangelize the world. That is the Great Commission. That is our mission. Very simple. We exist to exalt the Lord, equip the saints, and to evangelize the world. Bakit niyo yung progression? We will exalt the Lord. And as we exalt the Lord, we are equipping the saints so that they can go evangelize the world. Ito po yung ating mission. Why? Because we have this vision that God is a missional God. Yung vision po, yung ating aspiration. 
yung mission, the purpose of our existence. What we are doing para ma-achieve mo yung nais ng Panginoon. That's the mission. But then yung vision natin, yung ating aspiration is to become as God wants us to be. Ito yung vision po natin. That we would be a missional church in our community and beyond. Sabi ng ating Panginoon di ba? You are the light, the soul of the earth. You are my witnesses in Judea, in Jerusalem, Samaria, and the remotest part of the earth. It begins where we are. It begins where the church is planted. Without God reading first, I want to evangelize the world. No. We will begin in our community. That's why our prayer, our vision, is that we would be a missional church. Missional, I mean, reaching out the community, impacting the community, because we are witnesses. Become a missional church in our community and thereby beyond. But kaya nagmiliwanag tayo sa ating community, then we can send someone outside. We can support someone during the mission outside. But it must begin from within. That's why, nung sa ating mong retreat, nagtalong tayo, how to raise these 400 Filipino peoples in Dubai? And praise God, all of you, you know how. Meron kayo feeding program, meron house to house, kakausapin, all this we knew. For a 100,000 dirham reward, we know what to do. But what about the heaven, the eternal reward from God for a person who received yung gospel and got converted by the power of the Holy Spirit? Which is more important, 100,000 that can be spent in a single day or eternal life shared in the presence of a holy and loving, gracious God. That is far, far, far important. But we are willing to share, reach out to people for 100,000, but what about for the benefit of eternal life ng mga tao? Sabi po, yung pong Dubai, meron daw po yung UAE na around 700 sa so 2021, 780,000 Filipino. At mostly, yung 400 na yun, nandito lahat sa Dubai. And mostly, dito sa conference concentrated, dito sa Dubai, kung nasaan tayo. Kailangan ka sumakay ng taxi, ng bus, sa metro, na wala ka nakasalubong na Filipino. Forget mo na yung ibang lahat. Kasi sabi, set aside na niya sila. But, let's begin first with sa easy. Yung mga same language, same Filipino natin. But the thing is, the reason why we don't communicate to them, marami tayong mga reason. Ba? But I pray, sabi nga, seek the Lord. Lord, how can I become a effective soul and light? Because you are. We are. A Christian is a soul, is a light. But the problem, the question is, are you shining? Or, nilagay mo, sinakluban mo, yung light mo, so that other people may, may not see your light. It's a challenge for each and every one of us because we are children of God and our God, our Father, our Savior, they are missional God. And so we are. Sometimes, sisiratanong po natin, tanong po natin, we exist to glorify God sa ating mga buhay in whatever we do. Whether we eat, we drink, kahit anong ginagawa natin is to glorify God sa ating mga buhay. I don't think kung kayo po ay masaya na for this last seven months, simula nung January 2022, you have never shared Christ, you have never invited someone to the church, if for that seven months, kayo ay masaya that you have never shared Christ, you have never invited anyone to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are happy, we have a problem 
o sa ating sarili. But, if ngayon nyo lamang na-realize na hindi pala kayo nakapag-invite, hindi kayo nakapag-share for these seven months, praise God. Why? Because perhaps God is telling us, my son, my daughter, what are you doing all this time? Once upon a time, someone shared to us the gospel. In, what, in, in whatever means na ginamit ng Panginoon, someone has shared to us the gospel. Perhaps sa ating magulang or perhaps sa ating personally. But someone na ginamit ang Diyos. Hindi gumamit ang Panginoon ng himala-mala sa langit na naglaglag siya ng merong nakbana sa taas. Repent and receive. He uses people. Ginamit niya ang 12 disciples. He used the church as yung church dispersed from Jerusalem. Pinapersecute sila. Kahit sila sila mapunta, sila ay, they cannot contain the joy they have had or yung kanilang experience with their Savior. And if we are satisfied na tayo lang na nakakalam ng mensahe, merong 100,000 na nais ibigay si Sheikh Muhammad to sa mga Pilipino, at wala lang tayo pakialam, I don't think na, I think 100%, kahit sa metro, sabihin nyo na, merong pabuya, merong isang ibigay si Sheikh Muhammad. I guarantee you 100 percent gagawin niyo yun. Then, what about the good news? What about the gospel? Let us think. Kinakalangan ng makeover sa ating mga vision, sa ating mga mission. Our God is a missional God. And He has a mission for us. He has a mission para sa ating iglesia at para sa bawat sa atin. Matapon natin dito, so the crowd followed him and he welcomed them. Sabi mga kanina, they needed rest. They needed replenishment ng kanilang strength. But anyone who came to the Lord, the Lord welcomed them. Hindi yun sa natin nagtawag, eh, bisa ko ngayon. Diba? How many of us, na kung saan, dami natin excuses, pagod ako ngayon eh, huwag ngayon please, diba? Tayo mga tao, madali tayong mapikil. Diba? Pikil, kung ano ba, no? madali tayong mairita. Especially, pagpagod na pagod tayo. At tingnan niyo po, ang ating Pangisus, He welcomed them sa kabila na tired yung mga alagad. The Lord Jesus Christ is not interested sa isang tao na, na, na nakupo sa kanyang bahay, nakataas yung paa, ay wonder kung ano kaya pwede kong magawa. I am so uh, available, pero walang gustong gumamit sa amin, walang akong magawa. Saan kaya ang pwedeng may magawa? Para meron akong kinagawa. Hindi po ganun yung karaan ng ating Pakasus. He called Matthew as he was seated sa tax booth niya, yung mga nangingisda, yung mga apat, si Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they were throwing their nets. Si Pablo, he was busy fulfilling yung kanyang vision, mission, na destroy yung Christianity. And God called them while they were busy doing the yung mga bagay na ginagawa nila. He was not looking for someone. Ah, sige, tapusin mo lang yan. Tsaka, at tsaka ka na kita tatawagan. Pag tapos ka na. Hindi po. Because it will never come. Busy po tayo. Imagine nyo, example, holiday. Walang trabaho. Diba? Ano mo nang munang gagawin natin? Sa listahan natin, marami pa rin. Either na maglalaba ka, maglilis ka, manonood ka, ano pa ba? May sabihin, kahit holiday, may trabaho, meron pong gagawin. Hindi mauubos po yung gagawin natin. So, do not say na pagka free na ako, at saka ako gagawin yung nice ng Panginoon to share, to invite, or to bring, to connect people to the Lord. It begins with simple, yung ginagawa ni Ate Remy, praise God. Simple, invite, mag-invite lang. It's up to the people whether they will come or not. Because at the end, it is the Lord who will move the people's heart to say yes or to say not now, but perhaps next time. 
But as we have done yung easy part na pwede natin gawin. All we have to do, ito po yung sinabi natin yung ating mission, yung ating vision, the very simple strategy, not too complicated. Our strategy na gusto natin gawin is the Great Commission strategy. The Great Commission strategy is to connect the people to the Lord. And as they were connected to the Lord, immediately, ultimately, or automatically, they were connected to the church, universal church at least. But then, we need, pag na-connect po sila sa Panginoon, they will be, they must be connected to the church. Because that is their new family. And sa tunga, then, they will be nourished until they will become mature. And then, after being connected to the Lord, connected to the church, they will be connected to the ministry. And then, sila mismo, they can minister, they can serve. And yung repetition po ng chain. So, nag-share sila, they were connected to the ministry, then they will connect someone to the Lord, and then, yung dinala nila, they will be nurtured, they will be connected to the church, and then again, they will be connected to the ministry, and the cycle continues until the Lord comes. Very simple, very easy po. Hindi lang sila sabi na, share mo, ikaw mismo mag-share. Kung kaya mo, binigyan ka ng kaunahaan ng Diyos, praise God. But then, if you cannot share, bring them to the church. Let them hear the gospel. Verse 11 po sabi doon, When the crowds learned, they followed him and the Lord Jesus Christ welcomed them, praised the kingdom of God, and then sabi doon sa dulo ng verse 11, cured them and healed, and cured those who had lived need of healing. Nakita nyo dito, sometimes po, ginagamit ng, we are all convinced that physical healing is the most, is not the most important. But the fact that the Holy Spirit recorded this one and He healed them, those who need healing, una, He preached the kingdom of God. And then those who need healing, He healed them. Why? It's not the most important, but the Lord sometimes chooses yung mga physical needs to draw us, to call us to God. Ibig sabihin, sometimes the Lord uses yung mga physical needs, yung mga defects, yung mga kailangan natin, at mga physical, mga bagay, to draw us to Himself para makita natin that from these physical needs, he will draw us doon sa ating ultimate need na ang ating kumusus. Kagaya ko ng mga tao na to. They came there. Why? Because they get physical food. Diba? They want healing. And then, the Lord Jesus took that opportunity to preach the gospel bago niya sila pagalingin sa kanila mga physical defects. Sometimes the Lord is giving us Doon sa anumang mga need natin so that we will remain longing para sa Kanya. Siya yung ating ultimate na kailangan. It's not because Christiano ka na, ay everything ay magiging perfecto na. Wala ka ng needs. Sometimes even, magka Christiano na tayo, we are praying, Lord, Lord, ito po yung panlangin. It seems it's very long. It seems hindi nadidinig ng Diyos. But actually, in God's perfect sovereign plan, perhaps, as we commune sa Kanya, sa, kanya, sa ating mga panalangin, that is actually na yung reward. Why? As we commune sa Kanya, yung ating relasyon sa Kanya ay nade-develop at nagiging mas intimate. So, makita po natin dito, sometimes sa ating mga question, and even perhaps sa mga tao na sinashiran natin, God will use something na kailangan nila hindi necessarily tanang mawari. Maraming Pilipino dito sabi ko kanina, bakit po nag-abroad tayo? Example, example kayo, meron kayong pinapaaral na high school, college, pagpunta kayo dito para, hindi kayo nagpunta dito para, ah, para maging engaged sa church. 
ah, para makapag-worship ako every Sunday. That's not your purpose. Bakit kayo nag-abroad? Nag-abroad kayo para kailangan pag-aaral sa junior, magpupulis siya, meron akong kailangan anak na. Yun po yung mga, lahat yun ay mga physical, mga material. There's nothing wrong. Because kailangan natin kumain, kailangan natin ng pera para isend sa school yung ating mga anak. Hindi mo sabihin, junior o, ito yung Bible verse, punta ko sa school, sabihin mo kay Dean, ito yung Bible verse at uh, libre ka ng pag-aaral. But hindi po ganun. Pupunta ka ng school, kahit Christian school na siya, kailangan mo ng pera. But then, my point there is, so we came here not seeking God, seeking employment, seeking money. God actually, dinala tayo dito so that here, isolated, far from our family members, He will meet us. Makita natin na God bless us. Maraming gusto mag-abroad, pero bakit tayo yung nandito? Bakit hindi sila? To demonstrate to us that God is so good sa atin. Mahirap pa yung amo mo. Marami pong gustong mag... Yung amo niya ngayon, marami pong tao na maging gustong amo yun. Ulitin ko po, yung amo niyo ngayon, boss niyo, mahirap siyang paksamahan. But I guarantee you, somewhere, meron pong mga tao na mas gugustuhin na maging amo yung amo niyo, magkatrabaho lang sila. Mapunta lang sila doon sa posisyon niyo. But God, perhaps, meron siyang deeper plan, hindi natin maunawahan na bakit yung amo niyo ngayon ay yun yung amo niyo. But God is sovereign. He's in control. He knows everything. So we need to see much clearer po, una, yung, uh, yung kalooban ng Panginoon sa atin. So makita po natin, the needed for rest, the needed for evaluation, and nakita natin yung needy crowds. But when they came to the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, hindi niya po sila ipinagpabuyan. And then makita po natin, sabi doon, Makita natin yung, yung needy, hindi lang yung needy crowd, yung needy apostles. So, yung needy apostles, sabi nila, diba? So, now when they began to wear away, send them away. Sabi na mga lagad, we're so tired, we're so exhausted, we need a dress. Can you send them away? We need a break. Perhaps yung sabi ng mga alagad. But the Lord Jesus Christ, sabi niya sa kanila, sa, sa verse, verse 13, He said to them, You give them something to eat. Command po yun, imperative. Sabi ng mga lagad, send them away. We're tired. Pero sabi ng ating pangsus, Give them what they Give them something to eat. Perhaps kung yung mga lagad, kung Back to the future, di ba? Then, nagmamasid tayo. Ano kaya reaction ng mga pro? Especially si Pedro. Di ba? Perhaps si Pedro, sinasabi si perhaps ni Pedro, give me a break. Di ba? Saan na kukuha? Nagpapakain sa 20,000 na tao na to. Give them something to eat. Tayo nga walang makain eh. As give them something to eat. Perhaps yun ang reaction ng mga lagay. Nakita natin, the needy disciples. There's a needy crowd. There's too much demand. There's this overwhelming demands from the needy crowd. And then here you are, you are inadequate. You yourselves is a needy person. How you will meet the needs of the needy crowd when you yourself is inadequate? So in po yung makita natin na mensahe ng Panginoong Sus na gusto ituro sa kanyang mga lagad. It's not about the feeding the 5,000. It's not about the multiplication of bread. The multiplication of bread, that is the, the main message of the feeding of the 5,000. It's not the Lord making a magic that He can feed 5,000. Di po yung main, main message ng, ng kwento. The main message for the disciples is that they may realize that they are inadequate. They are incapable. They themselves are needy. And they needed an all-sufficient Lord for their needy condition. It's not about us 
isn't about us meeting the needs of the people. We cannot meet the needs of the people. But the Lord is all sufficient. Kaya po niya imit yung need ng mga tao. So, mga po natin dito yung principle na nais pakita ng Panginoon sa atin. Bawat isa po sa atin, we are limited. We cannot meet yung needs ng church, ng marami mga needs. But then, praise God, it's not depend po sa atin. It's depend on the one. Tatapon natin. We are simply waiter. Yung waiter po, hindi niya trabaho ng lutuin. Hindi niya trabaho na lutuin at mag-isip ng iha, iha at hahain. Diba? Doon sa needy crowd. Kailangan lang niya is to serve. But someone has prepared sa kitchen. All we have to do, take it from the kitchen and serve to the people. That's the easy part. Yun po yung ginawa ng mga tagal. Let's continue po yung assign. There were 5,000 men, hindi kasama yung mga kababaihan, mga anak. Then makita natin how the Lord meet the needs. So there's this needy multitude or needy crowd. There's this needy disciples, inadequate. But then there's this adequate or sufficient God na kung saan kaya niyang i-meet yung every need. Why? He's the creator of heaven and earth. The, the earth that He created, the people He created, did not just create it and then hayaan niya sa niya, okay, babaksyon mo na ako nga, bahala kayo dyan, gawin niyo yung gusto niyo. O, bahala kayo kung ano yung gusto niyo gawin. Hindi po. The creator of heaven and earth, He is the creator, He is the sustainer, and He is the governor. Siya po yung nagsustain, siya yung nagsusupply. At siya din po yung nagmamanage, naggovern ng lahat. To make sure na yung needs natin, na alam niya, na kailangan natin, yung pa po yung wants, yung sanit, ay nandun kung kasaan natin kila. Yung sasabi na the Lord's making magic na kung ano yung gusto mo, bibigay ng Panginoon. But the point is, yung pong ating Diyos, yung ating Panginoos, He is all sufficient at alam niya yung ating kailangan. And He will give it doon sa Kanya perfect na tayo. Alam niya kung kailangan natin kailangan. So, ito sa verse 14. So, there were 5,000 men and then sabi niya sa kanya mga alagad, sabi niya, have them sit down. He could have said, all of you, sit down. But then, hindi po. Gusto ko makita niyo yung principle. He told his disciples, have them sit down. Sinabihan niya yung 12, let the instruction come from you. So, coming from the Lord, the disciples, and then, sila yung nag-instruct sa mga tao, sit 50 by 50. Unang principle mo yun. The Lord uses his disciples. Though they were inadequate, though they were faithless, Nevertheless, he used them para sa kanyang purpose. And nasabi niya, and they did so. Sumulod sila. Diba? And they have them sit down. Nakilig naman yung mga tao. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked from heaven and blessed them. And then he broke the bread of the loaves and gave to the disciples again. What a wonderful sabi niya, Okay, now they are sitting 50 by 50. Sinabi niya sa kung paano yung Diyos pinakulan niya ng mana, ng, ng uh, mana, tsaka ng quail, doon sa wilderness for 40 years, what if kumulan ng mana? Kagaya ng Old Testament, yung mga tao. Wow! Nangyari na ito dati. Extraordinary. Or what if? Sabi niya, Angel, Michael, Gabriel, lahat kayo ng angel sa langit. Bring food! Diba? At yan, umilipad sila. Diba? Tapos, nag-serve sila. Wow! Ang fantastic, diba? I mean, no way, diba? Or what if, have them sit down and then, tiras yung kamay niya, food will pop up doon sa, sa harapan nila, diba? Very efficient, right? Bakit ginawa niya 
Minultiply niya din, oh, Pedro, Andrew, James, John, distribute niyo. That is less efficient, right? Bakit na lang magic ka agad, nasarapan nila, o perhaps dasadyan ka agad, hindi na mumuya. Bakit kinakailang padaanin dun sa 12 disciples? It's to teach us, it's to teach them, it's to teach this church that God, even though He is all sufficient, He can do all things by His way in immeasurably na mga pamamaraan and yet He is so pleased to use the 12 disciples who were faithless, who were inadequate, and so we are. Hindi po tayo ganun kagaling. We are, hindi tayo ganun kalaking pananampalataya. But God uses the preaching of the word. God uses the foolishness of preaching that people might be converted and might be reconciled their relationship to San Lam Creator. God uses means to accomplish the purpose to preach the kingdom of God that people, men and women, might be reconciled to their Creator. That is the purpose of it. It's not about multiplying bread. It's about teaching the disciples you are inadequate. I can replace you anytime. You are 5,000. I can choose, even I can make rock na mag maging disciples. But he uses it. Pedro, Pedro, right? Sabi ni Kuya Primo nung hahapon sa Pedro, right? Sabi ni Pedro, ni Kuya Primo, right? So ang point natin doon is, I pray, makita natin dito, sabi doon, they all ate. Lahat sila. And they were all filled and satisfied. Isang kung makain ka, di ba? Punong-puno yung nine-chain mo, pero hindi ka satisfied. Narasan niyo ba yun? Parang kumain ka ng pancet kanto, nagluto ka, tatlong pancet kanto, din sa namahang pa ng noodles, punong-puno yung chan mo. Pero yung bibig mo, gusto pa. Kasi hindi ka satisfied. Yung kinain mo, hindi ka masaya. Right? Pero dito, sabi doon, they were all filled and satisfied. Sabi po sa John chapter 10 verse 12, the Lord came, sabi yan, the thief comes to kill, to destroy, but then the Lord comes that he may have life and have it abundantly, joy and life abundantly. Yun po yung nais ng Panginoon sa akin. And sabi doon, hindi po satisfied na na-feel lang sila. Meron pa pang 12 full of baskets. Kanalim, meron 5 loaves, 2 fish, yung tira, 12 baskets. Bakit 12? For the 12 unbelieving disciples, paano namin papakain lahat ng to? Kulang nga yung pondo ni Budas. Diba? Binubo sa lahat ni Judas, tapos bibili tayo ng food. Kung may pera man si Judas, saan tayo bibili? Ah, hindi si Judas. <laughs> so, yung point natin doon is, ano yung sinu? Ano yung sinasabi doon? Diba? Ibig sabihin po, sinasabi doon ng ating mga Jesus, tuturuan niya kanyang mga alagad na kung saan your unbelief, I'll show you where to find provision. Diba? Isa po, may sanisin natin. Lami natin problema na may mga inisip. Sometimes ahead tayo sa problema natin. Diba? Hindi ko sinasabi, be irresponsible by all means. But then sometimes, 70% ng mga pinoproblema natin actually, <clears throat> hindi naman ito sa oong problema. Pero, bakit tayo na problema? Kasi pinoproblema natin yung mga bagay na hindi problema. Hindi ko sinasabing, hindi tayo mag responsible but then, anything na before maging anxiety, maging anxious, cry to the Lord, yung mga lagad, they were faithless, but then, the Lord pinakita sa kanila yung kapangyarihan that His all-sufficient God who teaches us how to minister and how to live our lives as Christian. Let's all stand up and let us pray. Let's bow our head at tayo po ay panalangin. Our all-sufficient God, all-sufficient Lord, Thank you so much, O God, for your mission, God. You have sent your sons for the purpose of sharing, to bring the good news for the salvation of those whom you call, O God, 
to repent and to believe dun sa promise Messiah ang amin Lord, thank so much because you are a missional God. And the church, the same of God, is a missional church. We should be a missional church with the single God. Nagliliwana dun sa community na nasaan man kami, Panginoon. And thereby, glorifying your God and that you may use us farther and beyond your God. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po. Amin paglangin. Bawat isa na narito, Panginoon, Lord, mag-usap ka po sa amin ang pamagitan ng inyong mga salita. At the end of God, you may be glorified, you will be edified, and that will be our greatest joy. And all for Him who have saved us, the Lord bless you and keep you, and to make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and the Lord lift up His countenance upon you, and gives you peace in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.